Everybody, welcome back to Iron Oak Sawmill. We got ourselves a beautiful black walnut, about 30 inch on the big end log that we're going to be milling up. And hopefully we can get lots of video for you guys. Single live edge slabs. This section we're going to cut off right here. This is junk, it's split. This piece we're going to cut into a shorter crotch section for that. And again here we're going to cut that off and get a smaller crotch section out of that. But this section down here is about... I'm going to call it nine feet long, 30 inches wide, average, a nice looking log, except for we've got some work to do, and I don't know if you caught it yet, but gate hinge, half the gate hinge is still in the tree, right there. We should be able to dig a little around these, get on them with a pliers, a wrench, and spin them out. We'll scan the log down with the metal detector and see if we got anything else interesting in there. We do have a little issue here. And here, we shall see what we have inside of there. All right, let's get to cutting. I gotta get the chainsaw out, got the steel MS-362 all ready to go. Just dressed the bar, sharpened the chain, cleaned it all up. She's all ready to cut. So what are the tools you need for extracting these? These actually to be this should be fairly easy. And there's one tool I might still bring out yet. Sledgehammer, this pry bar, because it's got that nice short sharp chisel end I can dig into the wood. You got the larger pry bar in case we need that for prying, of course. <laughs> I mean the chainsaw. Here's one you may not have known about. Hopefully this monster adjustable can get on this and turn it out. One of the other things I might try if this won't turn, because I definitely don't want to break them off is heat them with a torch the heat will travel down through prop pop it loose of the of the wood and uh hopefully we'll be able to take it out but let's see what we can do with what we got up here
Nice. Nice, seven inch long, <laughs> five eighths thick, fence hinge. All right, so that was at least six inches down the log, so there's gonna be a whole six inches in. Nice little bit of history going with this one. Let's work on this other one down here on the end. This one's bent. I'm not sure how it got bent, but this one's bent. <laughs> All right, makes me wonder. Come here and look. Now these weren't exactly the same thing, but what happened here? Did it break off in the tree? Is it long gone and I don't know. I don't know. A little worrisome because if it's about the same size it's got another inch long piece inside it's actually a little smaller than the other one if you look this is smaller the shank here is smaller but it's got about the same size threads on it now they're a little bit smaller threads so this one's five eighths this one half an inch so but that's not something you want to find with your saw blade When we found that gate piece in there, there might be a piece of fence in here as well.
back to the Ironing Sawmill where we were putting the dually back to work and getting these two logs over to the slabber mill. Uh, it's a long time coming. The white oak burl we harvested back in February and I think the black walnut log the client dropped off about a month ago and we were going to slice it. We had it on the mill for, for milling and I was like nope I don't want to trim this thing down to fit it through the saw just to get it done. I'd rather get it done where it's full double live edge and uh, so we decided to bring it over here to our slabber mill the thing with that is the slabber mill guy is backed up with a lot of dimensional lump orders he's got to do but i think deb sweet talked him a bit and uh got us over here and he, he agreed to take on these two logs so we definitely appreciate that so the black walnut log is going to be cut into uh 12 quarter slabs that's gonna be nice got a nice crotch on the one end and the burl is getting cut into 10 quarter slabs just as you saw it sitting in the picture, if you if you saw it at the mill, or just that's how it's going to be sliced. It's got that big flat bottom on it. We're just going to cut it straight down like that, and uh, can't wait to see once that's opened up. Yeah. Yeah. I did buy a, a new mill. That one's running now. Oh, that one's mill. That one's running, but the big one's not yet. Okay. Yeah. And we we were actually looking at. A slab remover to handle stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. That's why I ended up buying the mill I just bought. It was at auction. It was that made a difference. Yeah, that's true. There were some changes. You had to do that.
That's a white oak. <laughs> well, you know, we see some interesting stuff out here, but I think this is the biggest, <laughs> the biggest log I've ever seen out here. This is 12 foot long, about six foot diameter, maybe a little more, white oak. This is the second log off of the tree. The big one's not even here. It had to go to an even bigger sawmill. <laughs> but this is crazy. But we're gonna get a look around before we take off. But this one I had to show. So let's take a look around and see what, we got, what else we got here. All right, we found another huge one here, guys. This is not part of that other tree. But this is, this is almost, this is six foot diameter. And this is 16 feet, 18 feet long. He said he's definitely waiting for the bigger mill. Wow. Okay, now you guys have seen this one. This is the slabber mill that he's been using. And uh, he said this one just can't handle what he needs to do. Underpowered and overworked. That is, that blade's two inches wide or more and there. It's so much tension on that blade. But he says what it does is when you tension it too much, it starts to flex the entire head in. And he's been working with that one, but let's check out his latest one. All right, guys, this is the future big mill, slabber mill he's doing. 96 inches diameter, eight foot diameter logs he could do in here. It's got a four foot throat on it, height wise. So he can slice down four feet through any four foot log without moving any slabs off. 16 feet long. That's longer, it's 20, no, he said 22 feet long, 24 feet long. I forget guys, but anyway, and this thing is massive. These are the tracks, obviously, on both sides. He's waiting for the mill head to come in. But <laughs> it's going to hang off of there. Man. I'd love to be here when they were building this thing, putting this all together, getting it running the first time. But wow. Okay, guys. Here's the timber buddy. This is his newest one right now. This was brand new, sitting at an auction, and he went and picked it up. But man, I don't even know though what the capacity is on this timber, buddy. XP 380. I have to look up some specs on that. I like it up there. Work smarter, not harder. But man, big mills everywhere here. And I don't handle some logs. <laughs> 455G, John Deere. And of course, he had a nice inventory of slabs back here. I believe these are all his. He air dries down to 20%, kilns it down to six or eight, and he has big buildings for dry storage. So this is all the air dried stuff, wow. Um, these are 20, 30 feet tall. <laughs> Man, oh man. But if you notice, everything's stickered, everything's strapped, doing everything you can to keep it nice and flat. This is just a jungle of slabs back here. Okay. Oh, there you have it, guys. Unreal. Some of the stuff he's got going on out there. White oak, five, six foot diameter. Saws. Now that's a 50 horsepower electric motor going on that and it cuts 25 feet long, eight foot diameter. That is insane. Custom built saw, wow. His timber buddy, 36 inches wide. That's got a, that's got a diesel on it, on that one. I think he said a, I wanna say a, a 75 horse diesel or a, a something like that. Whoa, sorry, bumpy roads. Um, he's got it, yeah. That thing, he says, it's only got a 36 inch capacity, but it rips through logs. But uh, for now, let's get the dually and the trailer home. And uh, yeah, we'll 
We'll be back out here in uh, maybe a week or two to pick this up. Let's see how it works out. Well, the time's come. Dooley's loaded up with the equipment trailer and a single ash crotch. This thing's been around here for about a year. We had some of this video for this in the montage for 2021. Footage you didn't see, I think it was, something like that. Um, this has been out next to our driveway <laughs> over here for about a year. I think it was a year. Maybe it was a little over a year. That crotch, and this is the butt log here. We were tr going to try to get them both on, but we're crunched for time. And uh, maybe even crunch for weight with both of these on there. I don't like to push my luck with the weight. I don't want to bust the truck. It's the only big truck I got right now because this guy is still waiting for a transmission. So soon, folks, soon. We're talking hopefully by mid-July we'll have it back up and running. We'll see. But we got a monster ash crotch here. Let's get some measurements. Okay, out here on the crotch end, about 49, 50 inches across. And it's going to be a triple crotch. So we're going to have a bullseye up in there, a lot of crotch feathering the rest of the way down. Let's get a look at the small end. Okay, here on the what would be the butt end is 34. Just outside the bark. This is a good size ash tree, and one of the other reasons we wanted to save it. Lengthwise, and for length, we're just shy of 7 feet, coming in right around 81 inches. So, this uh, it's going to yield some good slabs, 2.5 inches thick, or 10 quarters. And, uh, yep, yeah, we'll be picking this one back up, hopefully, in about a week. But right now, we got to get out there with this. We've got a nice black walnut log for a client, and our white oak burl sliced up so definitely waiting for that you ready to go yep i'm ready let's get in a truck yeah <laughs> Here we go folks one white oak burl and one black walnut and we found metal in this one big metal wiped out a blade so 
Let me see what cut. It's down at, it was at this end of the log. This was part, this was in a fence row is what it was. But see if we can see this. Here's where he said he hit the metal in this this slab. The next cut down, she just quit. Wouldn't go any further. Right there. So there's five good slabs out of this. I don't know what the heck to do with this bottom piece. Maybe I can finish that up on the LT35, but we'll have to trim this out and see where that metal is, see what it was. So, honey, it could be up to six. But we had those gate hangers in the other one, so oh, six, six slabs. Wow. Well, five. this one's not a whole yeah. slab, but yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, but uh, well worth it. Uh, Twelve quarter. 12 quarter black walnut. All right, we got a hour drive home in rush hour traffic. Let's get going. <laughs> okay guys, we're getting the burl off of the truck and, or the trailer and uh, I'm a bit disappointed here. Unfortunately, a lot of the center of the burl as you can see is missing and it's not the standard burl figure that I'm used to seeing. Um, maybe white oak burls look different from maple burls. Here's one that actually, when we pulled it off, split in half. I mean, don't get me wrong, the grain is awesome. And there's ant damage. And where the ant damage is, well, they're still living in there for now. They won't be. <laughs> where the ant damage is, is cool. This is where the tree trunk was, and this is the burl growing off of it. But it doesn't look like your normal burl figure that I'm used to seeing. But... It still looks cool. <laughs> um, what's going to happen with it? Well, we're going to stack it up. We're going to clean each one out. We hose these out. We're going to clean each one out and um, get them restacked and uh, let them dry. And we'll go from there. This reminds me of the Catalpa. I don't know if you guys remember the Catalpa Burl. If you look back um, previous videos, maybe I'll link that in the description. That. Um, the middle of the catalpa burl was gone too. It was actually worse than this. Um, there's the first couple that came off were a little bit better. I just kind of flipped those up there, get them off to the side, and they look cool. But they still have the ant damage to them. And uh, well, we'll see what we see. And uh, we'll we'll take you along as we clean these up a bit. And uh, oh, we got a late start today. Probably going to continue with this one another day. But I wanted to get one down, get it cleaned up, and see how they turned out. But uh, not what I figured, but still a lot of cool involved here. So we'll be stacking them and drying them. <laughs> well, guys, we made it home. We've got the burl unloaded already. Perhaps we'll show some of that in this video. Perhaps we won't. Uh, it's not as good as we thought it would be. Um, unfortunately, ants got to the middle of it along with a little bit of rot. We've got some good slabs out of it, don't get me wrong, uh, but not as many as we like and not as good a shape as we'd like, but there's a lot of character in it. There's a lot of uh, opportunity for some epoxy fill. Not as bad as the old Catalpa Burl, if you remember that from uh, about a year or so ago. But we've got to get this one off the trailer, stacked and stickered for the client, so he can come pick it up. We're also going to split it uh, right down the middle, uh, separate it with some thicker stickers or spacers so that we can get the forks in so we can get it loaded on the customer's uh, trailer when they arrive. Unfortunately, this log is too heavy to lift the whole thing uh, all together with the tractor, but it'll lift at least half of it. It's <laughs> just a little bit too heavy. You can almost get it off the ground, but we'll split it in half, make it easy loading and unloading as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the stickering. Where's my partner at? There she is. You can say hello to everybody. Good morning. <laughs> so um, you can tell it's the temperature is quite different now. We are probably going to be close to 90 today, although it's nice. The humidity is not too bad, and uh, we do have a good breeze. So uh, we'll take that while we can get it. So as you may be able to tell, finally in t-shirts and shorts now. Deb's got her hair up to keep her hair off her neck to keep it cool. We're going to probably get around 90 today, but we do have a good breeze and there is the humidity's not too bad i can still see blue skies once it's so hazy you can't see a blue sky anymore you know it's humid you know it's muggy we have some shade for now 
but uh, I think we're going to run out of shade in a hurry. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Cool slabs we did back there, right here. Yep. Drove in small wedge first. And we doubled up the big wedges. I think we did. A little ring shake in the middle. And we pried here. And then Deb would slide into 4x4, so. Unless you give me the 2x4 to pry with. Let me get the 2x4 to pry with. Switch out. I'm gonna use a 2x4 for this. Here we go. Some fancy camera work here. <laughs> you step on it? Does that help? No. I will. One second. Here we go. This should pry it further. Just make sure things don't move in a bad direction. That's all I can say. Yeah, good work. All right, and there you go. So, let's try that on the other end. and pry on this at the same time. There you go. Perfect. Now we can get our forks in there. That four by four. There it is. Now we got the balance. Let's get these spread apart, get them cleaned up, and uh, get a look at them. I think you'll like it. Yeah, no. I can't even move it. No luck, huh? <laughs> yeah, they are heavy. I can feel it. Oh, you know what don't help either? What? The sawdust on the next one. There we go. It. I don't know if I'm lined up, but... Well, you kind of have to be. There we go. Okay, flop yeah. it. That's better. Ready? Am I good? Just let go. I'll drop it. Chuck. There we go. One, two, three. <sighs> there we go. That was much easier. On the length. To the point here, the longest point's about about eight foot nine. Across the widest part of the crotch inside the bark, 42 inches. We'll get it right about here. About 30 inches there. Across the center, I'm guessing about 27 or so. 26 and a half. You ready? Yeah. Oh man, look at that. I told you the crotch frame's oh. still intact. That is beautiful. That's what I like. That's 
try to really wash this out here. That is nice and solid in there yet. Okay, from this point up to the end here, that is all crotch feather. Got about 38 inches, 36, 38 inches of crotch feather, and that is some nice stuff right there. But so check out that grain. Beautiful stuff. This is almost this is like quarter sawn here in the sides. Pick out some really cool colorations down in here around where the ants started to do their duty. It's, it's all solid though. And you got this in here. It's all solid, guys. A little bit of uh, wire brush cleaning at that. And uh, onto the epoxy. It's got a natural dark from the ants being in there. And then up in here, you've got some really cool looking character up in here. I don't know if we can catch that on the camera. Let's get it real close. Yep. Got all those little ant channels in there and that, and they are going to look cool. Down the other side. Good amount of the quarter saw. This end here looks like it was um, some iron staining. That's from the blade. Blade came in and they must have stopped there for a second or two. And uh, got a little bit of iron staining that's shallow, so that shouldn't be bad. And on up here and into the crotch. But this is some beautiful stuff, guys. I think they are going to be happy with this. Let's get to that next slab. All right. Okay. Yeah. Come on, you can do it. I don't want to get my fingers pinched either. Ready? Yep. Okay, fine. Oh, my foot. Oh. Nice. Am I getting you? A little bit. Look at this. I'm spraying over here, and over here it's coming out. Let's see if I can get it to flow through there all the way. Yeah. Now that's their one trail. They got all the way up through there. Like this up here, yep, doing the same thing. Ready? little less ant artwork you saw us evicting them I mean there's just trails to go all the way up through there to here so they were getting up into the tree but notice they were going around the crotch screen caught it in time to have a lot of character and uh, still plenty of nice beautiful crotch screen going through here again we're almost quarter sawn in this one because we're starting to get closer to the edge of the log Almost quarter saw in this half. Yeah, this will be nice. This will be nice. Again, about 36 inches or so of crotch grain. Let's uh, measure these two raw bar at it. Here on the crotch end, 41 inches. About 26 inside the bark. Right to here, uh, 29 and a half, 30 inches. Yeah. All right, ready? Oh, I'm oh, getting lighter. <laughs> right down at you. Is that what you're talking about? Whoa, check that out. What? We're gonna have to show both sides of this one. I'm not seeing it yet. It. Wow. <laughs> There's your metal right there. There. Right there. You it? can tell right oh, here. Oh, I see it. And then knocked his teeth out of whack. Well, he probably ran all the way through it, and he hit it again, and it stopped the saw. Because that's about where his cut quit at on the sec on the next one. All right, guys, want to get a shot of this? This is going to be the bottom slab. <laughs> Look at this. I always like the beginning of the crotch screen. It gets really wild right in here. Going down. This is the last of the ant work. I think they got in through a branch stub. Looks like from here. We got in through a branch stub and just followed it on down. But you got this nice cathedral grain here. Following on down here, and you can see, bingo, 
It's a good sized chunk of metal in there. Uh, I'll let him decide how he's going to get that out, but we'll mark it. A repeat in the next half down. Uh, I may try to get it out of this half so I can complete the cut. Now, if he cut all the way through that with his saw and then it quit on him, uh, I'm going to have to work on getting it out of. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on getting it out of there somehow. We'll, we'll look at it then. But, yeah, and just looking at the bottom of this slab, this is cool. Even with this iron staining through here, that is nice. All right, guys, I'm going to lay this down, get a shot of the other side. There we go. How muddy. Oh, we've already splashed this one, so let's get some close-up of it. All right, guys, once again, 36-inch of crotch grain here. Looking nice, nice dark color. A little bit of the ant work here again. This, this I don't care. This color looks, because it's not mushy around it. This is perfect for epoxy fill. Let all this dry out, clean it up. Pour your favorite color epoxy in there and you're good to go. You could uh, straight cut the edge of two of these, do a book match. And just lots of cool grain. Even these, these outer cuts, I mean, a lot of guys write them off and they want those deeper middle cuts. Just a lot of detail here in these grains closer to the edge. I like those. Sapwood's not too bad on this tree. I mean, you got the size make up for it. I would let it just the way it is. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with, don't, don't steam, don't steam your walnut. Not good. Steaming walnut just takes way too much of the color away. Turns it into some mush. Some kind of mush chocolate brown instead of this nice dark chocolate brown that you get. And then you get the green hues, purple hues in it. Stuff like that when you finish it. If it's, if it's just kiln dried. So go. Nice.
I tried. I was moving the one side and not the other. All right, let's get these spread out like the last ones and uh, get a water pop on these for you. I'm definitely gonna have to chase some ants out of this one. Yeah. Do we wanna go all the way out here? I can do this end, dear. I'm I pretty sure. Well, there you go guys when you first start getting this garage figure that's what i like about this this stuff is super wide right here that looks nice so you can see the sap wood out in here nice contrast to that we've got our ant work here and like i said this is this left behind is stable enough right now it's not mush this might be right here but that'll probably come let's just take that out there we go. That would have rinsed out when I got the hose in there real good anyway. But uh, yeah, we got to get these guys evicted for now. And uh, keep them from eating any more of the slab up. But we'll keep their artwork here. Because that's going to look cool. Wow, that looks cool. <laughs> No, the metal was in the bottom half of this. Well, there could be metal up here. He didn't say anything about it, but he might have hit something. There's a black spot right there. Well, that might have been from the uh, the insulator we unscrewed, or the gate thing we unscrewed out of that. Again. And a lot of sap wood up at this end, but even some nice coloring in there. Some little bit of red coloring in there. At least I see it as red. Oh, Getting a red. really wide crotch figure there. That's cool. Working the way down. A little less ant art artwork in the back side here, but I'm sure when we flip it over, it's going to be worse. This edge got a little worse, but there was a, a bit of a rot spot in there. Part of uh, where they got in. At the base of the tree, it had a rot spot in it. Still some really cool grain going on in here. Right along in here, I like this stuff. Hopefully you guys are catching all this, but this is awesome. got some uh, some bigger walnut coming up guys so if you like this we've got some 40 inch walnut over there 45 inch walnut over there yeah. that we are in the process of getting milled yeah that's what this is this is the old uh, that's where that lag bolt came out for the uh, the gate there was one here and one down there and you could see the soft spot at the base of the tree where that was too very cool stuff going on here, guys. There's a lot of glare on this way, but just want everybody to get a good look at this. I always get people saying, oh, could you show us a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, slow it down a little bit, whatever. So here you go, plenty of it.
because this is broken off, remember? Guys, last one for this log. Just a little bit of sap out here. I'm thinking bench. Be nice. A little epoxy fill on the bench. They must have had a couple of different fence pieces in here at one time and moved them. Right here, here, and here. And then we had the one down at the bottom. All right, guys. Let's get this one cleaned up, stacked. We'll take it out with the rest of them out front. Well, everybody, that'll wrap it up here at the Iron Oak Sawmill 7. Beautiful black walnut slabs. You saw them. Water pops, always good to see. Uh, yes, the ants left their mark behind, but to me, that's character. It's definitely going to add to those pieces. And we were able to save that last one, get that cut completed that they couldn't get on the offsite mill, the LT35. Just squeezed it through. Always a good thing to save that black walnut as much as you can. The dually, once again, getting the job done as well. Uh, this truck's a lifesaver. Ford's going to be back online soon. And guess what? I think we're we're going to keep both of them. Probably. <laughs> Probably keep both of them. Can't go wrong. I mean, we could haul logs and the tractor at the same time. So, you know, uh, I think it's going to work out with keeping both. Okay, a few people we'd like to give a shout out to on today's video. Joe over at uh, Joe's Firewood Videos and Joe's Firewood Videos 2 for the hats. Definitely appreciate that, Joe. Bill Moon over at Backspin Graphics who actually did the hats. And uh, he's actually working on a new sticker for us. As soon as we can make up our mind which one we like the most, you guys will find out. And last but not least, Joe Main over at Industrial Cutting Tools. If you're looking for some blades for your wood miser or any of your sawmills, contact Joe Main. I'll put his uh, contact information down in the description. But he also sent us a bunch of hats and shirts a while back. But again, that's Joe Main over at Industrial Cutting Tools. So thank you again, Joe, for helping us out and hooking us up. Definitely appreciate that. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here at the Iron Oak Sawmill. Long video, I know, but hey, thank you to everybody who made it to the end. All right? If you have any questions about what we're doing here at the mill with the sawmill, wood splitter, or any of the tools we're using here, please put it down in the comments section. Glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out, and we'll see you at our next time. Take care.